And welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Jinx Logos. You see the number there for Jimmy Andrews. And let me tell you, high school athletic directors, coaches, booster club members, parents, Jinx Logos is your best option for caps, t-shirts, mugs, umbrellas, you name it. Anything with your team's name and logo on any kind of item, call Jinx. You see right there, they have done custom designs and custom looks for high schools all over East Tennessee. Great stuff. And again, it's not just this one size fits all kind of a logo thing. Custom designs. You can't beat Jinx logos. I'm telling whether you're a business or right now you're, you're planning to make a little money for your high school booster club, uh, you need to get in touch with Jinx logos. 755 776 755 7767. Jimmy Andrews, Jinx logos. All right. Chuck Cavallaris is over at the YP board, and we've got the predictions from the SEC media down in Hoover. Now, as uh, Nick Saban pointed out this week at Hoover, in the end, at the end of his session, um, you had, uh, what, four out of the last 21 years, the media has gotten the pick right for champion. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. And what was funny is, <laughs> yeah, and then the, I think most of the issue is everybody right. usually picks a, re a repeat, and yes. there just aren't repeats. Yeah. Um, this year they didn't pick a repeat, but what was funny is Saban actually drew some laughs. He said, I just mentioned that, so, you know, we're evaluating you. <laughs> and all the, all the media kind of cackled at it. Um, let's take a look back there. Chuck, as you can see, standing right there. Uh, SEC West, let's start over there. Alabama gets the nod over defending champion Auburn. Um, Lord knows down there they give out a lot of credentials to fans <laughs> who call themselves media, probably a lot of Alabama folks. Did they get it right in terms of picking Alabama to win the West? I want to say that's who I would have voted for. That's who I did vote for. So. Yeah, <laughs> that's Got who I did up. vote for too. I, I think it comes down to Alabama, Auburn head to head. It's at Alabama. I think Alabama will get revenge from last year. So I took Alabama to win the tiebreaker over Auburn. Okay. And, and is there not just a little bit of a feel that Al Auburn might have been just a little flukish last year? I think I'd just be fortunate just, in several games. Just yes. a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, I think Auburn is clearly the number two, though. I do too. Okay, so here's where I thought it got interesting. You got LSU number three. They are going to be incredibly young. I mean, they, they, mm -hmm. By the way, that's the votes. Uh, that's not the year the school the was founded. <laughs> that's, the, uh, that's the number of votes they got. Um, LSU, though, incredibly young. In terms of depth, they've now lost basically a junior and senior class each of the last mm -hmm. two years, as Les Miles pointed out. You got Ole Miss, who I think could be a sleeper this year. Obviously, a lot of people like them. They're fourth in the West, which is good for Ole Miss in that division. Mississippi State, an experienced team with a good quarterback. They're picked for fifth. Texas A&M, without Johnny Football, they got some young, they got a lot of youth, but still, it just looks odd to me to see Texas A&M picked mm -hmm. sixth. Yep. So in terms of Three, four, five, six. LSU, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, Texas A&M. Chuck, what are your thoughts, and then we'll get the guys' thoughts. Well, LSU's so tough at home. I think they've been th thirty-one and one in their last thirty-two games. I saw one stat on that. I could see them sliding a little bit, though, just because of the youth. And the question is, to me, they'll have a dual threat at quarterback. How will Cam Cameron, who likes that drop back pro style right. quarterback, how's he going to incorporate that? But I could see LSU dropping a little. Yeah, and it was interesting. Les Miles was asked about that, and he pointed out, he said, well, Zach Mettenberger didn't run a lot. Just because we got dual threat guys doesn't mean we're going to call runs, which I thought, oh, okay, that's an interesting way of doing it. We'll see, though, how many times they take off and run on their own. Um, thoughts on this one? LSU, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, Texas A&M. Anything out of order there? No, I think it's pretty much in order. I, I still think Mississippi State, though, will finish behind Texas A&M just simply because they're Mississippi State. Um, Ole Miss is the sleeper team. But, the you know, Alabama, I think you can question a little bit. Auburn, you can question. You can question them all except Arkansas. Okay. I think Arkansas is right where they need to be. Okay. Jim, I, I agree with Bob. Any of those after the LSU, the Ole Miss, and Mississippi State, A&M, you could almost transpose yeah. any of those. I agree, yeah. To see A and M six tells you how good the West is because they're going to be they're going to have a pretty good football team. Yeah. Now their defense is horrible, so that's why I would put them fifth because their defense stinks. It's but stunk for two straight years, and this has been number three. Yeah. It, but Manziel's been able to bail them out because he's so good on offense. Their offense will probably be pretty good again. I don't know that they'll be good enough, so I, I don't have a, an argument with that order. You got any arguments with well, that order? Well, I would just mention the let's get back to who is your traditional rival and how that factors into it. Where you got uh, Texas A and M has got to play South Carolina which on the is, road in the yeah, opener, which is a with a new quarterback. Whereas, uh, you know, Alabama got to play Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, 
let's look over at the SEC. And then we get the question mark then in the West is Mississippi State, Texas A&M. That's our biggest question mark. And one thing I'd say real quick, John, I think Alabama has a very favorable road schedule. When you start looking at the schedules, you know they're going to be tough at home. I think that could kind of tip the scales a little bit too. Okay, let's look at the East very quickly. I think everyone would agree South Carolina and Georgia are one, two. Uh, I would have gone Georgia, I think. Uh, just because Dylan Thompson has not been durable, and I don't know that Spurrier is going to stick with him the way he has Connor Shaw, but uh, I think Georgia is going to improve on defense, and I think Hudson Mason has enough experience, a uh, fifth-year fifth year guy, much like Thompson, but I think Mason getting in the last of the season last year when Murray got hurt, I would take Georgia by a hair there. Does everybody agree that South Carolina or Georgia, one or the other? Yeah, there? It is. Okay. I, 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 it's, I'm Say, watch out for the Gators. Okay. Well, that's well, what I was about to say. Yeah. Florida is a huge wild card in the East. Yeah. They've got enough talent to really make a jump, and Kurt Roper is expected. They said they did a, a bit of a look, and they saw how many more yards they would gain per game when Driscoll starts. He's 9-3 and three as a starter. When he starts and he's in the shotgun versus under center, mm -hmm. much better in the gun, so that's what they're going to do with him. Uh, I agree with you. I think Florida is clearly the wild card there. Then you got Missouri, Tennessee, Vanderbilt, Kentucky. Uh, I, I think that, look, that looks – Pretty right, pretty, yeah. pretty correct. But here's my question. If James Franklin is back at Vanderbilt, does Vandy land above Tennessee on that list? Yes, probably. probably. Mm -hmm. when, I, I mean, whether, it, whether they end up there, but preseason right. vote, exactly. would, yeah. I think that's mm -hmm. why they dropped behind Tennessee. I think people I don't think. know anything about Derek Mason. Chuck, any comments? Well, my, my comments would be, just look at Tennessee's record the past two years against these four teams. If you want to move up or keep from dropping, you've got to do better than just one one win against even Florida, Missouri, Vanderbilt, and Kentucky. You have got to start with here if you want to make any kind of improvement. And those three games there, Missouri, Vanderbilt, Kentucky, again, that's what we're talking about being yep. middle to late November when you may hit the freshman wall. General, the reason I went with Georgia, as you did, is that the graphic you showed a while back, South Carolina on the road is a 500 team. They seem to always lose a game they're not supposed to lose. They've beaten the... East champion mm -hmm. three years in a row, but they stumble somewhere along the way. So that's one reason I took Georgia. And, and that's why I keep hearing this, that, well, it's going to come down to that Georgia-South Carolina game. No, it doesn't. It hasn't the last couple of years. Yeah. South Carolina has, has been able to win that game a couple of times and still haven't gotten mm -hmm. to the championship game because they've lost somewhere else. Now, the overall championship prediction, I don't know if I can get – Cruz, I don't know where you want me to put that. Right in front of Bob. There we go. <laughs> Your, your wife won't be happy about that. Bob, I'm sorry. No, she'll be thrilled. She'll be thrilled. All right, there we go. Uh, that's how everybody predicted the championship race. Uh, nothing surprising there aside from Ole Miss getting two votes, Arkansas getting a vote, Mississippi State getting a vote to win the SEC. The interesting thing about Arkansas, maybe that was a Razorback fan voting that, or maybe it was just someone who looked at last year and saw where – Auburn had been 3-9 and nine and 0-8 and in the SEC the year before, and they're saying this lightning will strike twice. We'll see. All right, when we come back, replays in college football, a quarterback strike zone, and spring football that counts. We'll talk about it. Come on back on the Sports Source. You are watching East Tennessee's first and only year-round sports talk show on television.